Carlos and my team, I have a team of four people, plus me, so there's five of us. And we call ourselves Team Groove. I'm, you know, 74 years old, I've paid my dues, and I get the point a lot. I work with them, they execute my designs, and then I also have my own personal art that I make. You know, there's just a lot of property, there's lots to do. <laughs> Is that you back there? That is not me. His name is Coltrane. <laughs> and Coltrane is the guardian spirit of our property. And he was built by Carlos's five young boys when they were ages five to 13. So that's been there for nine years. He goes through different facial changes, but that's all the original wood. This is the Arch to Nowhere. These are old tequila bottles. We uh, go to Corralejo in West Guanajuato State, and it's the only place other than Jalisco where they brew tequila. So they have a bottle factory there. Richard and I went there and bought tons <laughs> from them. And because of the way we look, they thought we were rock stars. I swear to God, we get the biggest perks and uh, they had us in the you know, Mercedes limo showing us around. They thought we were somebody big. So it seems like you and Richard have a lot of fun together. We do. What is one of the things you like about your relationship? We both are irreverent <laughs> to a high degree. Within that irreverence is a reverence. You know what I mean? And um, we get the joke. I mean, everything's a joke. Sometimes you cry with jokes, sometimes you're sad. But, you know, we both have an understanding and we just found one another and it just, it just worked out. I mean, we met when I was 50. I'm now 103. No, I'm 73. So I had done all the wildlife and he'd done his wildlife. And, we were lucky to meet. This is the gallery, the chapel of Jimmy Ray. Why chapel? I was asked to do a body of work for a museum here in Mexico back in like 2006 in Traretro, La Museo de la Ciudad. And when they asked me for a title, I said, artifacts from the chapel of Jimmy Ray. I just made it up on the spot and I started creating these combines that were supposed artifacts found in this mythical chapel of Jimmy Ray on a mythical universe in a mythical place. Jimmy Ray is my father, James Rayburn McLaughlin Jr. I'm James Rayburn McLaughlin III. I got the name Anato in India. It means without sound. I had a teacher for a good number of years. I lived in India, and he hit the nail on the head when he gave me that name. Why? Because my mind is like, uh, just nonstop. And so this is my work, the work of Edward Swift, who's a local artist here, Sheridan San Segundo, and Carlos Ramirez, you know, they're mixed up. You talk about combine. What is that? combination of found objects, basically. These are all combines. You know, buffalo skull. Uh, this is an old toilet seat that's been reupholstered with material from Jaipur. This was a placemat that I found in a junk store in Nashville and then adorned all this. This is a, like a, for, eating shrimp. <laughs> I just find stuff all the time, I really do. I found this mirror in the Sausalito flea market back in the 80s. It had been on a boat and then I adorned it. 
This I found in a bazaar in uh, New Delhi. These are pieces I found in uh, um, Seattle. One time somebody left a box in front of the house full of old hash pipes. You just find everything. This was in a junk store. This was an old bookend I found in Mexico City. These are my old uh, telephones. I find a lot of jewelry. People give me jewelry. Um, I just have so much junk. It's almost sick. This was a plastic child's toy. Painted it and adorned it. I got this tile in Varanasi in India. I could go on. These are Carlos's um, pieces in here. His adorned skulls. Oh, you didn't see this. You should see this. Only because um, it's my dad in there. Were you close to your dad? Not really. But all fathers and sons, like mothers and daughters. <laughs> you know what I mean? You learn a lot. And my dad was a, a character. He died when he was young. But I, um, I honor him. I'm his son. And he was uh, a big influence in my life. This is Casa Kali, K-A-L-I, Kali Ma. This is the only remaining artifact from the Chapel of Jimmy Ray show that I did in Caretaro that's still here. I sold all the others. But that was the original piece that the chapel was built around. This is called The God of the Rhythm Within. And it's about my rebirth as an artist here in Mexico. How my whole color palette changed and how rich this culture is and how much of the old ways influence my life. Are there any artists that influence you, that inspire you? There's an artist named Hundert Wasser. He was Austrian, lived in uh, Vienna. He was very much a visionary and he is one of my major influences on this property. He used a lot of mosaic, just quite a character. And uh, Robert Rauschenberg, he did what the, were called combines back in the 60s. And I just was blown away by them. And I pretty much have been doing combines all my life in my own style. I had the opportunity to go to his uh, retrospective at SF MoMA a few years ago. It was at, towards the end of the run at SF MoMA. I got there at 10 o'clock, I go in. I had the whole exhibit to myself. I started weeping, because I knew it was for me. It was a gift from the universe. And I just walked through there like there was nobody there. It was just me and Robert Rauschenberg. It was fabulous. What are some of your spiritual influences or philosophical influences? I really dig Gautama Buddha. Siddhartha. And I really dig that he lived on this planet. I don't dig what happened to his words. I don't dig the religiousness of his words because he was not about religion. He was about just acceptance and surrender. So he's my biggest influence. Mi nombre es Carlos Ramirez Galván. Mi trabajo aquí es ayudante del Señor Amado. Él dice soy su mano derecha y a él, pues cuando él vino aquí yo aprendí también mucho de, de maestro. Aunque mi trabajo antes era la artesanía, se me hacía fácil cuando él llegó el oficio que él trae de con el vidrio, trabajar con el vidrio y fue lo más fácil para entrar a su, a su estilo de él, de trabajo con muchas cosas de vidrio, de plástico, o sea, su decoración de nichos, pues Él me dice, ayúdame con pintura, y igual yo aprendí, no sabía nada de pintura y aprendí con él. Y pues para entonces, pues creo que ya tenemos 20 años trabajando juntos y 
pues la verdad este es algo y le gusta trabajar con él eh, eh, exactamente es algo fantástico o sea trabajar con él aunque a veces es eh, él me pide opiniones y dice oh Carlos es perfecto y la verdad me gusta este su, su estilo de trabajo Carlos has many incredible ideas and his um, art is rooted in his indigenous experience, his experience as a um, <clears throat> young man growing up in Mexico. Carlos is so much a part of this. I make a point of always giving him credit because this is a, a legacy that I'm leaving behind with Richard and Carlos is part of that legacy. He's my brother, me, me and mine. I had a dream one night after I came home from work that I was lost in the dream. I was driving my taxi and I said in the dream to whoever, where am I? And the voice in the dream said, you're on Kismet Street. And I said, okay. And I look up and there's a sign, a green New York City street sign that said Kismet Street. So the next day I had to look up Kismet in the dictionary. It means fate. I thought I was very amazing dream so it's always stayed with me and my art with the found objects and with the type of work I do it's very much about leaving it up to what the universe has to uh, add it's about fate so this is all of all of these little vignettes up and down here have uh, stories that came to me while we were building we started here and it was the death card, death meaning a new beginning. So out of death comes a new beginning. So that cortisone is called death, a new beginning. This was with a group of people who came down from the uh, United States, mostly and one Mexicana, who's a good friend of ours. And they led a workshop and they bring their students with them and then we help them. And so. These are all of our cats that have passed away. And this is called the Big Hands. And it's about the disparity between the United States and Mexico. This represents the United States with the brick motif. And this is Mexico with the more cactus motif, the Caucasian blue eye, and the more indigenous brown eye. And they're facing away from one another. Inside the middle, and a TL, a glass artist, made that for me. And it is an anatomical heart and it contains the ashes of an artist friend. So to me, if we pay more attention to our heart energy, the energy of El Corazon, the energy of creativity and beauty, there is a chance that these hands can come together. And I really mean that on much more than a metaphoric level, but on a true level of existence where we just have to get back to our source of humanity. I mean, we've got, we just zoned out, we're all over the place. This is the Empress and the Emperor, La Reina y El Rey, and hence they have no clothes. And um, I'd like to point out that they are somewhat genitally correct in their depiction. And our biggest dog, he's not, the emperor's penne off four or five times. So it's tricky. This one here is me in my 20s, around the time that I had that dream of, about Kismet Street. And I call it uh, the hangman because I was hanging out big time. And, um, you know, I, I think I, I felt like I was missing out on something, but I think the hanging out was an important time. It's when you kind of are percolating, a lot was percolating. And then um, this one here is my most favorite on the property. And it's uh, dedicated to my mother. It's my mother, Marie McLaughlin, as a young woman. And she's saying in Espanol, respetame, respect me. She's saying it especially to James Rayburn McLaughlin Jr., who I named the chapel of Jimmy Ray after. And she's saying that to all men, me included, worldwide to respect women. It's inevitable that women have their day. 
inevitable. So I like to say that my mother, even though she had a hard life, she earned the respect that she deserved. And I respect her with all my heart. And so this wall is dedicated to Marie McGraw. So this is where we started. We started working in here, and I would have my art on all the walls. People used to walk through our house all the time and buy art off our walls, and it got real confusing. <laughs> now a lot of it is the art of friends or mine or things I like. Stephen Goldblatt, cinematographer, he did this shot of the Beatles back in the 60s, and he gave me that as a gift. That's um, Linda Bartula up there. Uh, this is um, Shirley Markintel. Um, this is Linda Wyman. These are all people I know. This is Ann Chamberlain. This is a friend of mine in Italy. I like to collect the art of friends. Carlos did that one of me. How did you decide to do art professionally? My first piece I sold was in 19... 70. I went to New York soon after that and I sold a little bit but I've always had to do these odd jobs to be to support myself and while I was driving a taxi I did more of what's called spoken word and performance art and then I found Bhagwan. I went to India and I stopped doing all of that came back from that community in 1989 and was working for all these rock stars. And a lot of them are art collectors. So I was just submerged in these incredible art collections. And I just started doing my art again. So I guess in my, around the age of 42, I rejoined society and that's been 31 years that I've been, you know, selling and making a living. When did you start dressing like this? <laughs> I dressed like this in the 60s. I was also highly influenced by an artist by the name of Louise Nebelson, and she adorned herself. I like adornment. My mother encouraged adornment when I was a kid. My mother was so cool. She would take me every September to Rothschild's in Oklahoma City and little Jimmy McLaughlin, little Jimmy Ray, would get on this drum and she would pick out my clothes for the year. And who, how many boys does that happen to? So it gave me a sense of style. My mother was real stylish in the middle of Oklahoma. So even though my style may not be anybody else's, but it's fun. Richard and I have fun doing it. Where are the kites from? The kites, one side I collaged, and then the other side is Penmaya, who was the father of Mexican temporary art in Oaxaca. Do the scorpions have any significance? They again were Tamayo. Those are his design, and in my mythology, the scorpion represents the protector. This is White Tara. White Tara is a Tibetan symbol of compassion. Your house is amazing. It's an altar. 